I must admit that it really irritates me when companies tell you, the consumer, that you must take a faulty product to the manufacturer to get it repaired. Now, this might well be okay if it's some years down the line and the manufacturer is best placed to help repair it. But if it's within the first six months or the first 12 months of buying a product, particularly if it's a TV, a laptop, a phone, a camera, or something that really shouldn't be going wrong in the first six or 12 months or so, your contract is with the company that you bought it from. It is really as simple as that. You've got a number of different rights under the Consumer Rights Act 2015 with regards to refunds and repairs and replacements. So if you're in the position, which I know some of you are, that you've bought a TV and it's gone wrong within the first six or 12 months and you've taken it back to the company you bought it from and they said, not our problem, you need to go to the manufacturer, then this is plain wrong. Your contract, to restate it, is with the company that you paid the money to. So if you walk into a shop and you buy a TV from that shop and your receipt is from that shop, it's that shop that you have the contract with. And it's that shop that you take it back to if it goes wrong within the first six or 12 months. Although there are some rules which I'll come back to in a minute. But if you go back to that shop and they say, no, you need to take it to the manufacturer, this is just plain wrong. Now it is right to say that the manufacturer could well help you with the problem and you might get it resolved by going to the manufacturer. But if you don't want to go through that hassle of going to the manufacturer, then you don't have to because your contract and therefore any potential breach of contract is with the company that you bought it from. Now back to those rules and the timeframes that you have certain rights with. There are broadly three different time frame categories that I will briefly explain for you. And for the purposes of this video, I'm talking about if you've walked into the shop rather than bought it online, which I'll come back to at the very end, so make sure you stick around. First of all, it's zero to 30 days. This is the period in which you have the most rights. So within the first 30 days, if something goes wrong with this product, or it's just not of satisfactory quality, or it's not as described, or any of the other things that are protected in the Consumer Rights Act, you have the right to go and insist on a full refund within that first 30 days. It's known as the initial short-term right to reject. Now there's a little side note which many companies are not aware of and even some lawyers may not be aware of unless they specialize in this practice area. But if you go back to the shop within that first 30 days and they say, we'll try to repair it for you and you say, okay, that's fine, try and repair it then let's say they take a month to try to repair it and fail to repair it. You go back after an extra month and say, look, forget it, just give me my money back. They might say, no, you're now outside of this first 30 days in which you could have claimed a full refund. That's not true because if you agree to a repair within the first 30 days, that's known as then a waiting period whilst you are waiting for them to repair. And this initial short-term right to reject the first 30 days is put on hold for that waiting period. If after the waiting period, it still doesn't conform to the contract, satisfactory quality, fit for purpose, and so on, then you can still at that point exercise your short-term right to reject as if it were still within the first 30 days. Next is between 30 days and six months. If something goes wrong with the product, it develops a fault or there's a fault already there, or it becomes apparent that it is not of satisfactory quality, i.e. it just doesn't last for the first six months, then the retailer, not the manufacturer, the retailer has one opportunity to repair or replace as they choose to do. If they opt to repair it, you must give them that opportunity to repair it. But if they try to say that you've caused the problem and the problem wasn't there when you bought it or it's not inherently within the product that you've bought, it's the retailer within that first six months that must prove that it's not their fault and actually it's your fault. Let's say you've dropped it and cracked the thing, then it would make it your fault, but it's down to the retailer to prove it. If they've attempted to repair it and failed, then again, you can claim a full refund. The third time frame is any time after that first six months. And there's only a very slight difference here, and that is that the burden of proof that there is a problem with the product and that problem was not caused by you, that burden then falls on you. In other words, you have to prove that it's not your fault, that it's the product's fault or the shop's fault, and that this fault was either inherently within the product itself or it was there at the beginning. But otherwise, that being said, then you still must give them one opportunity to attempt to repair or replace it before you can claim this time only a partial refund because presumably you've had some use of the product for that first six months or however long it's been. 
And as a caveat to all of that, with the first 30 day period, there are some exemptions such as downloadable products such as music, games and apps. And also there is a shorter time frame for perishable goods like foods that are going to spoil in fewer than 30 days. And finally, as I said, I would come back to if you bought something online, you have 14 days of receiving it to return it. That's known as a cooling off period. And you don't need any reason for this whatsoever. It is a bit of a burden for sellers because many consumers will abuse this position and just send things back knowing that they have a right to send it back without any reason. And it doesn't even need to be in the original packaging. And if they tell you that it must be in the original packaging, then that might be considered an unfair term and unenforceable anyway. Although you do have to package it up properly when you send it back and if it gets damaged you might be liable for the damage so it's always worth packaging it properly, getting it signed for, proof of postage and just to make sure that they have received it safely if you do send it back. But please don't abuse this because it's not good for sellers and only send something back if you really have to. But anyway guys I hope that was a useful overview for you because many of you will get frustrated that these companies tell you that you need to go and speak to the manufacturer and it's just not true. So as always I'll be really grateful if you give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.